Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray together Psalm 8. O Lord, our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery of the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. 
live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Gospel of Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, as he ascended into heaven and to all of us today and whenever we are in need, remember, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. If you remember nothing else today, remember that. Today on Trinity Sunday, I'd normally preach a sermon about the mystery of the Trinity, but It's not a normal year, except that maybe the things that have always torn at our society are tearing even bigger holes now. I'm not going to attempt to explain the Trinity to you, except to say that at the core of God is relationship, mysterious relationship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three yet one. Created in the image of God, Relationship is at the core of our humanity. At the core of who we are is a primordial need for love and belonging. We cannot survive alone, only in relationship to one another. We ignore that at our peril. I started writing this sermon Tuesday afternoon. It was a perfect late spring day. The sky was that wonderful shade of blue that's hard to look away from. A canopy of green leaves was gently rustling and shimmering in the late afternoon sky. 
and my wind chime was quietly humming. Everything in me wanted to lie in the hammock, stare at the trees, and imagine that the world outside my yard did not exist. Well, not everything in me. My brain wanted desperately to escape, but my heart kept tugging at me to stay engaged, even though it is painful to do so. Over the past two weeks, I've spent at least an hour each morning, early in the morning, working in my front yard, pulling poison ivy out of a large bank of English ivy. For protection, I wear a long sleeve shirt and pants, as well as big rubber gloves and boots. The poison ivy is embedded into the English ivy, which makes it difficult and strenuous to untangle. The work, however, is oddly satisfying. It's quiet in the morning. The weather is cool. The birds are chirping. My brain enjoys the strenuous exercise, the gentle early morning sunshine, and the visual evidence that I'm making a difference. The world outside my yard, like the world inside my brain, is harder to change. Confronting the pernicious sin of racism in my own life and in the world around me, while living through a pandemic, is infinitely harder than ridding my yard of poison ivy. So it's tempting to just stay focused on my yard. Racism is insidious, wound into our culture and lives, just as the poison ivy is wound into the English ivy. And it's harmful to all, all of us, even if we can't always see how. I have an interesting relationship with poison ivy. I pretend like I have some kind of natural immunity to it. And maybe I'm not as allergic as some. I wear protective clothing, but I'm often careless, and the poison ivy ends up touching my face. When it does, I tell myself it won't harm me. So far, I've been lucky and no bubbly, itchy rash rash has appeared. If I want to, I can, because of the color of my skin, pretend that racism doesn't exist, kind of like I do with poison ivy. I actually had a counselor at camp one summer tell me that if I didn't believe in poison ivy, it couldn't hurt me. That's not true. Neither is it true about racism. Racism exists whether we acknowledge it or not. And even when we think we aren't hurt by it, we are. Even a glimpse at the news over the past few weeks makes that loud and clear. The problem isn't just a few bad police officers. It's our culture, which is embedded with so much institutional and cultural racism that most of the time, as a member of the dominant majority culture, I can try and ignore it and hope it will just go away. Maybe you do as well. This week, I couldn't ignore it. In addition to the daily barrage of heartbreaking news, I listened to two podcasts that helped me, even as they challenged me. One was an interview with an African-American council member from Minneapolis and her 17-year-old son. He's a rising track star, and running is one of his greatest joys. But his mom won't let him run in their relatively wealthy neighborhood. When he was younger, assuming his mom was being overprotective, he'd occasionally sneak out and go for a run anyway. Can you even imagine being a teenager and needing to sneak out to go for a run? Because of the privilege of my life, I've never had to worry about such things for myself or for the members of my family. Everything was fine for the young man until one day a neighbor approached him while he was running, asked him what he was doing, accused him of stealing, and threatened to call the police. At 17, he no longer runs in his neighborhood, only at school with his teammates. His mom summed up a struggle that is way too common for parents and children of color, for parents of children of color, with words 
I'd been thinking about all week. Words, actually, I think about a lot. As hard as it is to change laws, she said, it's even harder to change hearts. It's especially hard when we're pretty sure our hearts don't need changing. I know on my own I can't eradicate the sin of racism from my own life, much left, much less the life of others. I know pretending it doesn't exist makes it worse. I know I need to listen to the voices of people of color whose life experience is much different than my own. I know I need to speak out against racism when I see it. I know I need to step out of my comfort zone and face a reality I wish would just go away. I know I need to continually examine my own life, confess, and make amends. I know all of this, and I also know that this is very difficult, uncomfortable, challenging work. Feeling ashamed makes it even harder. Ibram Kendi, a historian and professor at American University, provided a vivid image of why it's so hard to address racism while discussing his latest book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. To grow up in America, he said, is to grow up with racist ideas constantly raining down upon your head. You have no umbrella, and you don't even know that you are wet because the racist ideas themselves lead you to believe you are dry. And then someone comes along and says, you're wet, here's an umbrella. You can say thank you. Or you can get angry at the person offering you an umbrella and continue to insist that you are dry. As our country has erupted with protests, the majority of which are peaceful, it's painfully obvious that as a nation, we are soaking wet. I'm guessing no one listening to this sermon would stand up and say, I'm a racist. But simply proclaiming that we are not racist is not enough. We must also actively work to confront racism in our laws, our places of work, our culture, our church, our hearts. The first step is confession. We begin by acknowledging that we are wet and in need of help. The next step is inviting God into our hearts to cleanse us and to transform us. I have found in my own life that it's hard, perhaps impossible, to do any of those things when I'm full of hatred or despair for myself or others. Hatred and despair lead to more hatred and despair. Love and compassion, on the other hand, motivate and empower me to change. Let us therefore pray, not as a passive act, but with the belief that prayer changes us, that Jesus Christ changes us and changes us and changes us and enables us to help transform the world. Let us pray. Come, Lord Christ, and forgive us for the ways that we have ignored the struggles of people of color. Forgive us for the way we have treated the poor and powerless in our society. Forgive us for holding so tightly to our power and wealth and comfort that we have little space or willingness to share as generously as you call us to, as generously as you do. Forgive us, Lord, and fill us with your love and compassion that we might be able to see and treat our neighbors and ourselves as you see and treat us, as flawed and imperfect, but nevertheless, worthy of love and compassion. Amen.
Please join me in praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the house of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended to heaven, 
and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for the human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the beauty of the earth. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. A prayer for the morning. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring forth. But make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. I invite your prayers, your thanksgivings, aloud or in silence.
We pray for all those who have died. We pray for all those who are grieving. We pray for those who are bravely standing up against racism. We pray for all who are sick and for those who care for them. We pray for hope for all those struggling with addiction, for those who live in fear. We give you thanks for the beauty of the earth, for the gift of life, for the gift of prayer and community, and for the gift of sacred music. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks.